to the episode of Locked on Buckeye for the Locked on Podcast Network. I am your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Friday, March the 12th in the year 2021, and your Buckeyes live to play another day by beating the Minnesota Golden Gophers 79 to 75. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at jstevens07. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter as well at Locked on Buckeye. Line up for today. In segment two, we're going to recap yesterday's game with Nate Dickinson of Locked on Golden Go for segment three. We're going to talk about a few things that the Buckeyes must do to beat Purdue today. We begin today's show talking about a couple things that stick out in my mind after watching what happened when Ohio State beat Minnesota on Thursday afternoon. Going into the game, We talked about how this could be a confidence-boosting game for Ohio State. Not just that game, but the stretch of games they can potentially play this weekend in Indianapolis, Indiana. Might I add, it's not just in Indianapolis. They're playing in a football stadium, and you already know because they say it on the broadcast numerous times, that stadium in the field, they're playing on a half of the stadium. There's a court on the other side. Just a little weird contrast. They're playing in a big dome. Uh, Shop perception or uh, depth perception is a little bit different. But it sure seemed like Ohio State at times, they could shoot the ball a a little bit consistently, and they were comfortable with the (laughs) alley-oop pass in the first half. But back to what I was originally talking about. We know it's going to be a confidence-boosting game, but it could be a sequence where Ohio State beats Minnesota. You beat, or the first, whoever the first-round matchup was ended up being Minnesota. You beat your first team. You beat Purdue. You beat. You win on Saturday. You have a chance to win on Sunday. And you win the confidence. You get the confidence that's needed going into the NCAA tournament because of the way you ended the regular season. Ohio State struggled. Ohio State was not playing their best basketball. Ohio State could not close games out. Ohio State played poor against Iowa. Whatever you want to talk about, that's the way things were. And Ohio State could do that. Won the first half. I was thinking, okay, cool. You get off to a 13-0 lead. Got a couple of guys. Junior got a dunk on somebody driving in the paint. Two-hand dunk. I'm saying, okay, cool. I like it. I love it. Keep it up. Keep it up, though. I like what I'm seeing, but you got to keep it up. Unfortunately, <laughs> they didn't keep it up. There was some alley-oop, which I, think, I believe Musa Jallo got an alley-oop. I know Justin Arns got a dunk. I know Kyle Young got an alley-oop and a dunk as well. I mean, everybody was just free-flowing, moving. But then you saw the mental lapses. Then you saw the Buckeyes playing, doing the things that they had done so many times at the end of the season. Oh, a three or four or five minute scoring drop. <laughs> Here you go. Minnesota, you want to win the game? Let's play a game of hot potato. I want to pass it to you. Just don't pass it back to us. That's kind of what happened. Oh, pass it, dig around. No, we, don't want to, we don't want to score. Pass it, dig around. We don't want to score. Pass it, pass it. What are we doing? Play basketball. And at times... You may be, you may have felt the same frustration I am portraying right now because that's exactly how things felt in a game. And I do mention this with uh, Nate Dickinson. You'll hear about this here in a second. But if you were going into this game, you want to tell me Trey Williams shoots 5 of 13 from the field. Jamal Mashburn Jr., 8 of 22 from the field. <laughs> it was look at these numbers. I've looked at them numerous times. I'm still astonished. You have Marcus Carr, 7 of 24 from the field. You want to tell me Minnesota shoots 36% from the field and 25% from downtown. You're saying an Ohio State double-digit win. They move on. They win comfortably, but they can't close the game out. At the end of the first half, Minnesota, Minnesota was shooting 25% from the field. Ohio State's defense wasn't the best, but was doing just enough to keep the gate the lead stretch. Oh, 8 to 12 points. And there was a stretch. I was uh, on the Twitter. And Jack Grossman of uh, ESPN Louisville, the uh, Crimson the Crimson Coverage podcast, he was tweeting out saying about how Baylor, Ohio State, and another top team in the country, they all three had an 8-12 to 12 point lead. They were all pulling away separate games, separate times, and at the same time, were pulling away against their opponent. Ohio State, however, showed you once again, closing games out is going to be a struggle. One reason, they don't have a closer. You say, Jay, EJ Liddell is that guy. Okay, great. I like EJ. I think EJ is really good. 
He deserved the first team all conference honors that he earned. At the same time, I got mentioned, this may have been like a month ago, about a few weeks ago, I mentioned like that formula you need to win an NCAA championship. One of them was having a good lead guard or a guard that can, get, can create, get his own shot. Do you trust Junior at the end of at the end of games? Nah. Nah. Do you trust Liddell at the end of games? Yes, but who's going to get Liddell the ball? Will there be a double team on Liddell that restricts him and not allows him to get the ball? Do you trust Walker at the end of games? Do you trust Musa Jalo? A random name, yes. Do you trust Kyle Young? Do you trust Justice Suing? Think about the things that go on in, in at in-game situations and who does Ohio State have that can be that lead guy? We're struggling to find out who that can be. Yes, in yesterday's game, Ohio State at times thought they were going to pull away. They did not pull away like you would like. And it leaves us today to ponder questions, scratch our heads, and wonder what will we see from Ohio State today against Purdue. Yes, beating Minnesota, that's amazing. That's good. It needed to happen. Purdue's a different animal. Who will you play on Saturday if you win? Oh, oh, we can't look ahead just yet. Don't go that far. One game at a time. I was texting one of my friends during the game, and I almost, it was like five minutes left. Like, okay, Ohio State's going to win this game. I mean, it's Minnesota. Not just because of Minnesota, but Ohio State has the better players. They have the better coach. They are the better team. They can win this game. And then, oh, here we go. The same thing happens at the end of the game that has happened so many times. What will happen against Purdue? Can Ohio State win? Yes, they can, but it'll take a better effort than what they put forth against Minnesota. Got to step, step away very quickly. When we come back, we're going to turn it over to my conversation with Nate Dickinson of Locked On Golden Gophers as we recap Thursday's game, Thursday's win, a close four-point win for the Buckeyes. But first, check this out. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Football might be over, but NBA, college basketball, and even the NHL are in full swing. Bet online even covers awards, TV shows, and reality TV. Real time updated odds and props on almost anything you can imagine. Bet online has you covered for all the news, scores, and odds. It's the best way to place your bets, and it's even free to sign up. Head to betonline.ag or on your computer or your mobile device and make sure you use promo code locked on to receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit once again that is head to betonline.ag on your computer or your mobile device and make sure you use promo code locked on that is l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n to receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit bet online your online sports book experts Get more of the sports news you need in less time with our new Locked On Today podcast. Peter Bukowski hosts Locked On Today, a daily podcast, breaking down the biggest stories with analysis from our local experts. Start your day with all the sports news you need in under 20 minutes. Subscribe to Locked On Today wherever you get your podcasts. Locked on Buckeyes. It is Nate Dickinson from Locked on Golden Gophers. Nate, how are you doing today? Doing good, Jay. Appreciate you having me on. Yes, sir, man. No problem. The game is over. A four-point win for the Buckeyes at times or a double-digit lead. And Buckeye fans are probably thinking we should have won this one easily. But as Ohio State has done so many times this year, they have failed to close out the game what were some? Let's start at the end of the game. What were some of your thoughts at the end of this game? As Minnesota at times got it down to I think it was a one point lead with like nine seconds left. The team didn't stop fighting. I mean, there were opportunities that Ohio State. I mean, as I'm sure you can go over, kind of gave Minnesota the opportunity to get back into this game. But give the Gophers some credit. Down, down that stretch, they did everything they needed to to make what they could out of. A game that, as you said and we talked about before we got started, should have been over a long time ago, and we'll probably touch on it uh, again before we're done. Minnesota did everything they needed to to try and claw its way back into that game. It was a team that was a fraction of the team that beat Ohio State, Michigan, Iowa early in the season. It was a downfall of a month for Minnesota that at the very least ends the season on something to hang its hat on in an outstanding effort here against Ohio State that ends up falling just a little bit short thanks to what ended up being some pretty miserable shooting throughout the game, but really early on is what killed Minnesota. 
most games, if you look at Minnesota shooting per se, or field goals that were made for the for the Golden Gophers, uh, Trey Williams, 5 of 13. Mashburn, 8 of 22. Carr, 7 of 24. And th- most of those matchups, if you're looking at, at just those three guys alone, they didn't shoot the ball the best, really not well at all, not efficient. And those times you would think, yes, they're going to win. Ohio State has had a, t- has had a tendency, not just against Minnesota, but numerous games down the stretch, even games that they've won, that they have gone on droughts, scoring droughts, and they have allowed their opponents to stay in the games. And it's frustrating to me as I watch it because I'm thinking, okay, Ohio State, you're clearly the better team. Two of the best scorers that Minnesota had the first time around aren't playing. This should be a 20-point win because you're clearly head and shoulders better. It's very frustrating for myself to know and to see the potential and how good this team can be and see that so many times it just seems like they can't put the pieces together at the end of the games. And I got to give credit to Minnesota like you did there. They kept fighting. There was a time early in the year that Ohio State fans said Ohio State fights and they never quit. That fight and never quitting mentality seems to be, have gone somewhere. And it's nice to see Minnesota pick that up. It's just unfortunate that the game ended for them the way that it did. Yeah, and that's another thing that, I mean, Obviously, Ohio State had lost four in a row going into this game. A win's a win. But uh, I don't know if you're, as a Buckeye fan, feeling all that much better going into the tournament or even through the rest of this week after this matchup against Minnesota. You got the W, but it was a close game. And as you said, while Ohio State has had some trouble finishing out games, Minnesota's had the same trouble. Uh, I mean, even yesterday against Northwestern, the echoes came up. Minnesota jumped out to like a 16-2 lead yesterday. Well, the Gophers were up 17-3. Last time they played Northwestern in the regular season, they lose that game. It was that story all of the last month. And even though it didn't turn out to be a win for Minnesota in this case, it was nice for Minnesota fans at least to see something that wasn't the same old story because it was getting to the point where at the middle of the second half, fans were starting to feel like, I can turn this off. I know what's going to happen. Minnesota's going to blow it. They did not blow it this game. Ohio State earned that win at the very end. They almost lost it, but they earned it at the very end. And they're going on as a result. Minnesota's season's probably over. But if you're an Ohio State fan, I don't know. It's kind of like what I said after the Northwestern game. That was a 51-46 win on Wednesday for Minnesota. That was not a pretty win that makes you feel any better about this basketball team. I don't know if this win makes you feel any better about Ohio State as far as its chances to go deep, deep into the NCAA tournament. There's still plenty of those worries from the four-game losing streak, I'm sure, but that's for you to tell us. No, you're, you're exactly right. Those wor- those Warriors are still there. They haven't gone anywhere. If Ohio State was playing, let's say they had a rematch against Michigan State, I would say the Buckeyes would win that game. Um, if they were playing Maryland, I would say Ohio State would win that game. But going up against the Purdue Boilermakers, the only team this year that Ohio State has lost to twice, and they're trending in the right direction at the right time in the season. I don't want to play Purdue. Matt Painter always has his guys ready. He always has some youngsters and some older guys that play very well this time of year that you can trust. The one scary thing about Purdue is they have a youngster in Jay Nivey who can create and who is a playmaker. I don't know who on Ohio State can guard him the entire time. Is it Musa Jallo? Possibly he is nursing a hurt ankle, so I don't know if he'll play the minutes because if he is that guy, he'll be playing more minutes than normal, and Ohio State fans know Musa Jal is on the court. That's limiting your offensive production. So, yes, it is a little nerve-wracking to me because of how well Purdue is, and a win's a win. You can't discredit it. But you want to go out and close a game. You not only want to see a hot start, you don't want to see any mental errors, mental lapses, which we saw clearly from Ohio State in this game. And you want to see them close the game out well, close it out strong. Double-digit lead in the final minutes, and you almost lose it. Luckily, luckily, you got C.J. Walker, who calls a timeout because Dwayne Washington Jr. sure looked like he was going to lose that ball um, or either go out of bounds, fumble it, turn it over, something, because it was two two guys trapping him in the corner. That's the wrong spot you want to be when you're in that situation. So, yes, me personally, if I was a de- fan, diehard, casual, somewhere in the middle, fan doesn't really matter, someone covering the team, it does make me nervous because even though you get the – confidence of a win, you're still not showing signs of the Ohio State team we saw in January, 
December, I know, and backwards, but even in February as well. Well, I want to ask you, you mentioned the troubles that Ohio State may have with Purdue. What are you going to do about Edie out there? Because just looking up at the Minnesota box score last time out, Liam Robbins was a big problem. He had, I think, 24 and 14 when Minnesota beat you guys by 17 points in January. So as far as the big man goes for tomorrow, you mentioned this is a team that's already beaten you guys twice. I brought it up that uh, out of eight Ohio State losses, Minnesota's beaten seven of those eight losses. So there was something to look forward to, but it didn't end up happening. Anyway, I just wanted to drop that stat real quick while he still had the chance. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as the big man goes, it seemed to be a struggle against Minnesota. Do you feel like that's something that'll be a problem for Ohio State, or is that something that was uh, really just a problem against a few teams and something Minnesota or something the Buckeyes have uh, done a decent job defending that big man offense? No, honestly, when it comes to the big man, that's where Ohio State struggles. Travion Williams, the he was an all all league um, nominee. I think it was second or third team. Actually, I know he was on the first team in one of the one of the all Big Ten uh, teams that were announced recently. I forget if it was the coaches that poll that voted him in or the media. But Travion Williams has always been a problem. You got Travion Williams, Luca Garza, um, Hunter Dickinson. Buckeye fans would will hate me mentioning a team from the Wolverine, a guy from the Wolverines, but he played that well. Um, big men have always been a problem. Zach Eady, not the performer that Travion Williams, it, Tra Travion Williams is, but I'm curious because I know Chris Holtman has said if Zed Key is on the court, the backup big man for Ohio State, sometimes Key and Liddell on the court at the same time, the defense is an issue with just them defending their men. Now, if Key is on the court, Liddell's on the court, okay, great. Offense may be there. Key has played a whole lot better. I don't know if Holtman trusts him key that is the backup big man to guard Zach Eady, which that does present a problem because if key is guarding Eady, who's going to guard Trevor and Williams if they're on the court together? You can't have key guard both men and Liddell, yeah, maybe 240. He gives up four inches to Trevion Williams, and Trevion Williams has showed if you double-team me, I can find a way to pass out of the post and find the cutting man very easily. Going back to the first matchup, Ohio State and Purdue had. And that's something that we'll talk about here on Locked on Buckeyes in the final segment after Nate and I wrap this thing up. But, Nate, no, it, it is going to be interesting. That's one of those, like, chess match pieces that you're trying to look and see. Do you focus on Williams? Do you focus on Edie? If they're both on the court, what's your personnel? Ohio State lacks a uh, lacks big men. They have all year, and I just don't know. One of those question marks, man. That's one that, that, that makes me a tad nervous. Edie, not the offensive guy, but if he's on the court with this height and Williams as well, that presents a huge matchup problem for Ohio State. Well, it's going to be a whole lot of fun to watch for sure. And unfortunately, Minnesota won't be able to be a part of it. But it was a really good fight and a really good game to end the season for Minnesota and to keep it going for Ohio State. I'm sure you guys are at least happy to still be going on. Nate, that is true. Happy to still be going on, even though it was a little nerve-wracking and I was holding my breath at times. Uh, still happy to be going on. Nate, do you have any last comments about this game, Minnesota-Ohio State, that kind of may be a lasting impact as we wrap this thing up? I mean, I guess the big takeaway was kind of just Minnesota kept fighting, at least from a Gophers standpoint. I'm sure you've got plenty more to think about from the Buckeyes. But, I mean, there were points that even start of the second half or at halftime, you're like, how are we only down 12 right now? How is the right, game not right. over right now? And it ended up being that way all the way up until there are about five, six seconds left. So for a Minnesota team that had been so beaten, not only just physically with the injuries that it had to deal with, but mentally – with the real struggle of the last month of the season. It was a way to go out that is maybe fitting, just getting close but not being able to get there, but it is definitely a good testament to the kind of effort this team put up. So Minnesota fans certainly not happy with the way this season ended, but at least for now, for today, that effort that Minnesota put out was more than enough, I think, to get a tip of the cap. Very true. Nate, if you could, let the listeners know where they can connect with you via social media, those that are listening, not watching, and then those that uh, let them know where they can connect with your show as well. Yeah, I'm uh, Nate Dickinson. It's at Nate with Sports, if you're one of those fancy people who reads. Uh, the podcast is Locked On Golden Gophers. Sounds a lot like Locked On Buckeyes. L-O Golden Gophers on Twitter and wherever you find your podcast, you can find the Golden Gopher podcast right next to the Buckeye podcast there. Every single weekday, if you like Minnesota sports, give us a listen. 
we're going to be there and you can follow me on my personal Twitter. I tweet more stuff than just the Minnesota stuff. I, I like to think I'm kind of funny. <laughs> That's good to hear. Hopefully, uh, Buckeye fans find some humor when they give you that follow. Buckeye fans, stick around. We have to pre prepare for tomorrow's matchup against Purdue. Kind of gave a little tidbit about what we'll talk about one detail, but there's more than just a big men matchup that we'll talk about in the final segment of today's show. for the perfect protein bar. You know, the one that fits your macros for your diet and even tastes like a candy bar as well. Well, guys, I have ended my search and I thoroughly encourage you to consider ending yours as well. Built Bar is great for the health conscious guy. It'll help you lose and maintain weight while indulging in a delicious treat. Bars are low calorie, low sugar, high protein, high fiber, and they're great for the keto diet. And with the purchase at BuiltBar.com, you will get a free cooler. Now those are only available while supplies last. Go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCKEDON20 and you will get 20% off your next order. Make sure you go to BuiltBar.com and put in promo code LOCKEDON20. That is L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N number two and the number zero to make sure you receive 20% off at BuiltBar.com. This year, the Locked On Podcast Network will be live on Selection Sunday, March 14th, reacting to who's in and who's out of the NCAA tournament. Big Ten Ben Stevens and Josh Neighbors host Selection Sunday Live with local experts from around the Locked On College Network of Podcast. Follow at Locked On Live on YouTube, Twitch, or Facebook today and watch our live Selection Sunday special on March 14th. The Buckeyes win. But that does not mean their season is going to get any easier because a win makes you move on deeper in the tournament with a tough test against the Purdue Boilermakers. The Purdue Boilermakers are winners of five straight. Wins, wins over wins at home against Michigan State, 75-65, and then a win on the road at Nebraska, a win on the road at Penn State, and then a win at home against Wisconsin by four points, and then a win at home against the arch rival, the Indiana Hoosiers, 67-58. to 58. Purdue was a tricky team. I'll say tricky because you can't really project how they're going to be from how they play at the beginning of the season. Very similar to the Michigan State Spartans. They get a lot more attention, a lot more notoriety, mainly because Tom Izzo is a Hall of Fame head coach. Matt Painter, he's well on his way to being a Hall of Famer as well. I'm not saying that he's going to be. They're not saying all that, but Matt Painter... Mm, he is one of those coaches. Tricky. In this time of year, he tends to get the most out of his team. Leading scorer for the Purdue, the Purdue Boilermakers, Travion Williams, an all-conference uh, Canada honoree with 15.2 points a game. He also leads the team in rebounds as well with 8.8 .8 rebounds a game. Leading assist man. Eric Hunter Jr., 2.8 assists a game. He also leads the team and steals as well as 1.1 a game. Then the big man in the middle, Zach Eady, who leads the team in blocks with 1.0 blocks per game. Zach Eady stands at 7 foot 4, 285 pounds. You put that with Travion Williams, who I believe is six foot ten and two sixty five you have two eighty five two sixty five down low seven four six ten that's a lot of mass that's a lot of mammoth that's a lot of large human beings down low so how do you think Ohio State will combat that well honestly you might see a lot more Zed Key. Now, the one tricky thing is, if Zed Key shows early on, he can't defend the big man down low, you won't see Zed Key very much at the end of games at all. The same trend we have seen throughout the entire time this season. Zed Key may show flashes of goodness on the offensive end, but sometimes his defensive, his ineffectiveness on the defensive end as far as guarding the big man or maybe protecting the rim at the rate that he should he finds himself on the outside looking in with this team late in game second half situations so i'm not sure about what chris holtman will do with those two i will be more ner nervous so i'll be i would focus more on williams than ed yes ed is heavier and taller 
but Trevion Williams is the big man down low. And we could all think back to the very first matchup that Purdue and Ohio State had where Trevion Williams and the double team came, was dishing, was throwing the ball around properly to the cutting man, allowing his teammate to get an easy two points and an assist to Trevion Williams' stat sheet for that day. That's one tricky thing. Ohio State has shown double teaming in the post or triple teaming in the post, passing out of that for the big man, their defensive rotation. There has been holes there. Their ability to move one way and then get back to their man, not the best at times. Makes me a little bit nervous against this Purdue team that has shown they're really, really good. Another key thing in this game, aside from finishing finishing the game, is how Ohio State defends Jaden Ivey late in the game. Jaden Ivey has shown he can be the closer. He can be a guy that Ohio State can ride on. Even though he is a youngster, he is a freshman. He is someone that Purdue can trust late in games. Now it's a tournament time. First tournament he's played in in college basketball. Will he rise to the occasion? Will Ohio State find a way defensively to combat that? Do we see more Musa Dallo late in the game? Do we see Kyle Young late in the game? Does he guard Zach Eady or Travion Williams? And you allow for A.J. Liddell to guard a different man, to not allow him to potentially get in foul trouble. These are all things that are at the forefront, forefront of my mind and possibly at the forefront of Chris Holtman's mind as well. One last thing that I'm curious to see in this game. It is, is this the time we see Justin Arns stroke two or three or four threes in a row like we have seen previously? Justin Arns plays best when he is in a starting lineup. That goes without saying. Confidence rises. Teammates trust him. The offense flows a whole lot better with the first unit. There's a reason why C.J. Walker does phenomenal with that second unit because he can be that leader that they need. Is this the game that Justin Arns gets his stroke going consistently again? Because something tells me, I don't, I'm not one to like look into the future or project what's going to happen. I do make game picks. I just don't know uh, when it comes to like how people are going to play. I don't, don't want to get all into it, but I will say this. Something tells me. This might be the game. This might be the matchup that Orange Stroke comes back, makes big shot after big shot after big shot. And he may be what is needed. He may step up in a way that Eugene Brown did earlier in the season. Oh, two different players, two different roles. Both have hit big three-pointers before. This may be the game that Justin Orange shot comes back and that's what propels Ohio State to it. I, I don't know. I haven't made a pick about this game just yet. Recording this shortly after the game was over against Minnesota. I don't know who I'm picking just yet. I'm leaning, personally leaning towards Purdue. But look for my Twitter page, at jsteven07. I will tweet out my pick via, I think, Tally site might actually tweet it out for me. Tweet out my pick. I'll retweet that thing about who I think will win the game. You know how sometimes injuries... Will the player play? Will it not play? It's a game time decision. Well, my pick might make you a little nervous when I say this, but my pick for today's matchup, it's literally a game time decision. Guys, make sure you guys subscri subscribe or follow, excuse me, not subscribe, not YouTube. Follow uh, me on Twitter at jsteven07. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked One Buckeye. Two o'clock approximately. 2 o'clock today, the Buckeyes will take the court against the Boilermakers. Who will win? Who do you think will win? You guys can email me, jstevens317 at gmail.com. If you have any comments that are longer than 280 characters, you don't want to tweet at me, you can send it via my DMs. They're always open. Or you can send an email. I will correspond that way. We're going to have a good basketball game to play. I do think Ohio State will play a whole lot better.